In this video, we're going to be talking about the new offline bounce feature in Pro Tools 11. Now, the offline bounce feature allows us to bounce down a selection from the timeline in a non-real-time way, which is extremely fast, much faster than doing it in the regular real-time bounce method. Of course, this is all pending on your CPU and the plugins that you're currently using at the time and how many of them. But overall, the offline bounce feature is extremely, extremely fast. Now, the way it works is this, is you make a selection on your timeline. Now, that selection that you make from the beginning to the end is what is going to be part of that offline bounce. Now, offline bounce is actually found in the bounce to disk menu. So you can go to file, bounce to, and in this case, we're going to select disk. We're going to talk about the quick time bounce later on, but we're going to select disk. When we select disk, the bounce to disk window opens up. Now you'll notice this is all pretty much looking the same as it did before. So we have all our bounce criteria and our bounce features, file type, format, bit depth, sample rate, and so on. And we can also do a share with SoundCloud and Gobbler direct from here as well. We can change the file name, choose the directory of where we're going to be bouncing the file to, where it's going to be saved to on our hard drive. And the offline bounce feature is found right to the bottom left of the bounce window. When you click on the offline bounce option and you engage it, you now take the bounce process out of the real-time render and it now goes offline. And as you take a look at the bounce meter, you can see how fast it's going along until it's done. Now, if I was to do that exact same bounce with that exact same timeline selection in real time, you'll see the time difference. So again, I'll go to File, Bounce to, Disk. This time I'll take the offline bounce and I'll turn it off. So now, since the offline bounce has been disengaged, it is going to be a real time bounce. So you can see how long that's going to take as opposed to the offline bounce. So the offline bounce feature to get things done really quickly, if you're doing premixes or just uh, taking out some stems and you want to do it quickly right away, or just doing a rough mix and you want to bring it to somewhere else, offline bounce is such a handy tool. And it's about time. I mean, Logic and, and other, other uh, DAWs have been doing it for a long time. So it's a really wanted feature by Pro Tools users. So finally, we've got it and it's a great tool. Now, there are some things to keep in mind when you are performing offline bounces. First of all, there are some things that are not included as part of the offline bounce. For example, any hardware inserts, that means any pieces of outboard gear that are acting as inserts in Pro Tools, those hardware inserts will not be included in the offline bounce. Any external MIDI-driven audio, such as synthesizers, hardware samplers, things like that, those will not be included in the offline bounce as well. Also, any other external sources, whether connected into audio tracks or auxiliary tracks, those will not be included. So basically, any audio source that is part of the real world that's outside of Pro Tools will not be included in the offline bounce. Now, if you want to include any of these external sources in your offline bounce, you will need to record them as audio back into your Pro Tools session. Once you've done that, then you can include that audio of your external sources as part of your offline bounce. One other thing to note as far as offline bounce is concerned is you might notice at times that your offline bounce may seem to struggle or may seem to take a little longer than normal. And that's because possible issues with regards to CPU usage and disk usage. If your CPU is being used by a lot of processing uh, or you have other applications running in the background or lots of applications running in the background, that might affect the offline bounce performance. Also disk usage. If you have a lot of things going or the bandwidth of your disk isn't big enough or there's a lot that's happening within your hard disk, there's data being transferred back and forth along with while you're doing the offline bounce, that's also going to play a role in terms of the speed of the offline bounce. So when you're dealing with offline bounces, and if you find that your offline bounces are acting dodgy or slow or sluggish and just not as fast as it normally is, 
a good thing to do is to check your system usage window and take a look at the CPU meters and see where they're all at. Also take a look at the disk usage meter and see where that is at as well. If those meters are maxed out or if they're kind of weird where one meter is like completely maxed out, the other meter is not, you're running into some kind of CPU errors and some, some kind of CPU issues. One resolution you could try or, or one thing to try is try disabling some of your plugins, try making them inactive. That helps to free up system resources. Also, try turning off other programs that are running in the background. If you have too many programs that are all you know, trying to access your CPU, that might be bogging the system down, causing the offline bounce to kind of act a little squirrely. So if you ever notice that your offline bounce is slow and sluggish, make sure you check your system usage window and take a look at those CPU meters. That's going to give you a good indication as to what's happening. Up next, bouncing to MP3 and another file type simultaneously.